community, which entails our faculty, our staff, our students. And when we say community, we say that in the aspect of common unity. A little more than three and a half years ago, um, we embarked on a five-year strategic plan. The components of our strategic plan, as you would know, is our mission, what we want to accomplish, our vision, where we're going, our core values, the things that ground us, and those are excellence, appreciation of heritage, carrying with us integrity, being financially responsible, and providing quality service, not only to this institution, but this community, to the state, to the nation, and to the world. We also have our five strategic goals, and our five strategic goals are the things that help us accomplish our mission and move toward our vision. Those things are faculty capacity, Faculty provides the intellectual resources that are central to our mission and our vision. Student engagement, our students being engaged and in a sense can add bodies of knowledge to their profession and think scientifically so that we can compete on a national and international level. Facility enhancement, this is our home and we want it clean and we want it to represent paying college well, and we wanted to represent the Augusta community, and we wanted to be one of the places that, when you think about attending an institution, or holding a conference, or having things here, that you're comfortable. Technology infrastructure. Technology infrastructure, we've moved tremendously. We've just laid down some fiber optic, um, eight feet under the ground for our redundancy, and we've spent millions of dollars on our technology so that we can compete with other institutions in the nation. And friend raising. Friend raising is akin to fundraising. We're not for everyone. We're a small liberal arts institution with a mentor education that plays a very essential component of our education and community. We have our medical university, we have our state college here in Augusta State, we have our technical college, and the four of us, or the four or three, we play a major component on what we do to support this community and making us one of the top 10 cities in the nation. Payne College represents and makes a 35 to $40 million economic impact to this community. That's very important. Not only are we following our 25-year master plan, which, which we believe that we should always plant trees, that we should never, that we'll never have an opportunity to sit under. Those are very important things to us. And we always plan for the seventh generation because we know we're not here on our own accord. Payne College has strengthened um, faculty. Right now we're right at 75% of our faculty holding terminal degrees. We've increased student scholarships. We've totally revamped the technology throughout the campus. We've um, broken records with our fundraising. And we continue to fight to have a foundation of academic excellence. We are accredited with our SACs for the next 10 years. We've been reaffirmed with SACs for the next 10 years with no repeat findings of, of any type. Those things are important, but that's just the foundation. When you're moving to be a premier liberal arts institution in your region, those things are just the foundation. We have to move to a level where we're far beyond that and compete at a national and international level. One thing that I'm very proud of, and when you have an opportunity, please go over and check out 65% of our students are conducting undergraduate research. That means they are writing theses at the undergraduate level. That's very important because when you compete at the international level, 3.1 million students graduate from India and 3.1 million can speak English. In the next two to three years, China will be the largest English-speaking country in the world. Our students to compete 
on the national and international level have to be able to think scientifically and conduct undergraduate research coming out of our undergraduate program to compete on the national level. But on this day, at this occasion, I'm proud to announce that Payne College Academic Programs has moved from a division to a school structure. And the two school structures is the School of Arts and Science and the School of Professional Studies. This strategic move of the college is instituting new programs that will be on the forefront of job growth and development. Now I'd like to take an opportunity to introduce our new provost and vice president of academic, academic affairs who will lead these two schools. Dr. Marcus D. Tillery has a wealth of knowledge and experience in industry and has worked at Purdue, has worked at um, North Carolina A&T, and he comes as a former dean from Thomas Edison College in Trenton, New Jersey. At this time, I'd like to present to you uh, my colleague, Dr. Marcus D. Tillery. Thank you, Mr. President, esteemed alumni and friends, students of Payne College and the Payne community. It is my honor to be a part of this community uh, and to serve Payne College in the role as provost and vice president of academic affairs. When I took uh, the initiative to move this way, I realized that I was coming back south. Back south means a lot of things to me. Um, I was born and raised in a small, rural village, if you will, of Tillery, North Carolina. Same as my last name, so that as you know where I'm from, really. So this was like coming home to me. It was nothing new. It was a welcoming that every mile down 95 spoke to me. So I'm honored to be here. It is our vision here at Payne College to be reasonably recognized as a premier liberal arts institution of higher education. This new structure consists of two schools, the School of Arts and Sciences and the School of Professional Studies. Each school has within it three departments. The new structure will allow us to more effectively adhere to our mission to provide a liberal arts education of the highest quality that emphasizes academic excellence, ethical and spiritual values, social responsibility, and personal development in order that we might prepare men and women for positions of leadership and service in the African-American community, the nation, and indeed the world. In order to guide us in the accomplishment of this mission, we have our strategic plan in front of us. And nothing that we do on a day-to-day -day basis in the appointment of a provost or deans gets any distance from our strategic plan, the accomplishment of our mission, and our vision. Our strategic plan is built on five pillars, as Dr. Bradley uh, gave you faculty capacity, student engagement, facilities enhancement, technology infrastructure development, and friend raising. Anything that we do in academic affairs based on this new school structure is designed to get us closer to the accomplishment of those goals. Specifically, however, the new structure will allow us to do a few things. The new structure will allow us to create a larger pool of resources for our students especially in terms of professional development, research, and access to faculty, laboratories, and other resources. The new structure will allow us to more effectively create, share, and apply knowledge through a greater sense of unity and cohesion within and across disciplines. The new school structure will allow us to garner greater visibility for our programs through interdisciplinary work and collaboration within the schools, across the college, and throughout the higher education community, as well as in corporate America. It will allow us to focus our leadership of our programs to provide for greater efficiency of human and financial resources, and to more effectively market and promote our programs, and indeed, to lend itself to the broader fundraising efforts necessary to bring those resources to the table. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing this alone. There's a team that will be working with me, and I'm very happy to introduce that team to you this morning. First, Dr. Tina Marshall Bradley, 
Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. And the deans of the two schools. First, Dr. Emily Allen Williams, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. And Dr. Stephen Thomas, Dean of the School of Professional Studies. Each of the schools is further broken down into departments, and that's the structure in which we intend to go forward in the accomplishment of the goals and objectives as outlined for us in our strategic plan as led by the Honorable Dr. George C. Brad. 